Um, if you're familiar with the Bible and the Gospels, uh, Matthew, Luke, John, uh, they relate the story where Jesus was tempted. Uh, and if, as you saw, Jesus overcame the temptation. Uh, so today we're starting a new series for the next four weeks that will lead us up a week after Easter. And we're, we're naming the series, The Son of God Committed to the End. But today we're going to talk about how Jesus overcame that temptation. And Jesus wants to help you overcome temptation. There's three things that I want to show you about temptation. It's not on your outline, so but following your outline, if you want to write these things down, they're not. A lady this morning says, Pastor, you usually give us all the answers. I said, I can't, I can't give you all the answers all the time. But number one is this. It is not a sin to be tempted. That you know that it is not a sin to be tempted. When you give in to temptation, that is when it becomes a sin. So it is not a sin to be tempted. Number two, the other thing that I want to show you is this. You and I will never outgrow temptation. As long as you are in this body, you and I will always be tempted. Okay? You hear what I said? Yes. Say with me, I will never outgrow temptation. All right? How many of you li would like for there no be temptations in your life? Raise your hand if you would like. Keep your hands up. Father, I pray that you take them today. Uh, I don't want them to die, Lord, but that's the only way that... <laughs> I'm teasing with you. The only way you won't have temptation is if, if the day you, they bury you. As long as you're in this body, young or old, male or female, all of us will be tempted. We will never outgrow temptation. I'm a pastor. I have temptations just like you. I said, I have temptations just like you. But temptation is not a sin. It is only when we fall into temptation that it's a sin. And then finally, the other thing that I want to sh show you this is this. Temptation is not so much a sign of your weakness. Temptation is not so much a sign of weaknesses. It is a sign that you are a threat to the devil. Today, your eyes are going to be open. And you're going to realize... That the reason the devil keeps tempting you and wants you to fall is because if the devil can keep you down, you will never be a threat to him. But if you start applying the word of God to your life and you start doing what the word of God says, you will be a threat and you will overcome the devil. Because Jesus overcame the devil, you can also overcome temptation. Oh, Jesus. Let me say it again. Because Jesus overcame temptation, he overcame the devil, and he wants to help you to overcome temptation. Because when you overcome temptation, you overcome the devil. Yes. There you go, finally. So, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, I give you the Bible verses. And I expect you to open up your Bible, but uh, I'll, have, I'll read some of these. But ever since Adam and Eve was tempted, every one of us will be tempted. Men have tried to avoid it. Resist it or ignore it, but we already gave you these truths. It is not a sin to be tempted. You and I will never outgrow temptation. Temptation is not so much a sign of weakness. It is a sign that you are a threat to the devil. So let's read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. The Bible says this. It's talking about Jesus. For we do not have a high priest which is unable to empathize with us. Or to help us, we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with us with our weaknesses. But we have one who was tempted in every area, just as we are, yet he did not sin. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every area like you and I have been tempted. But nonetheless, he did not sin. And that is the reason Jesus can understand us in our weaknesses, and he can help us. Hebrews 2.8 says this. I like this one. Hebrews 2.8, it says, Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Let me read that again. Because he himself suffered 
when he was tempted, he is able. Say with me, he is able. Come on, say it. He is able. He is able to help those who are being tempted. In other words, Jesus is able to help you. You know what able means in Greek? He's able. You know what it means in Spanish? El puede. He's able. In other words, he can, but are you willing to receive his help, and are you willing to ask him for help? Okay, some of you are like, I don't have no temptations. <laughs> yeah, right. I wish I could do a movie of your, of, of your temptations. But don't worry, we're not going to do them. Jesus wants to help you in every temptation that you encounter. All right? Now, this is the base for my teaching this morning. It's in 1 Corinthians, and it's in the bottom of your outline. It's on the bottom of your outline. I'm going to read it once, and then I want you to read it with me. The Bible says this. God is faithful, and he will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand, that you can't stand up against it. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you will not give in to it. You hear what it says this? Read it with me. It's in your outline. God is faithful. He will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out. So that you will not give in to it. If right now there is an emergency and we had to exit this building, there is a fire, I don't know, there is an emergency. If you notice, there's one exit there, there's another exit there, and there's another exit there. And just in case we have another one for the children, there are at least four exits to get out of here. All right? Every time you are tempted, God provides the exits. God provides the way out. Yes. All right? Now, the Bible says that God is faithful. Say with me, God is faithful. God is faithful. Let me tell you why Paul is saying that God is faithful and he interwines it with temptation. When we talk about God's faithfulness, it's, a God, it's about God's consistency. When, when someone is faithful, it's someone, is, it's someone that perseveres, someone that is constant, someone that is always there. In the good and in the bad. That's what Paul is saying. God will be faithful with you even in the times of struggles, in the times of problems. And God is faithful. He will be there to help you in your times of temptations also. And not only is he faithful to be there. As a matter of fact, when you are tempted, he will be there to help you when the temptation becomes too strong for you. You can't handle it, but God can. I say, you and I can't handle it, but God can because he is able. He is faithful. And then he says, when you are tempted because God is faithful and because he knows that you're weak, he will show you a way out so that you will not give into temptation. Every time you are tempted, God always provides the exits. God always provides the way to escape. All right? So this morning, I want to show you six practical ways that God provides so that you and I can escape temptation. Six practical steps that you and I can do, follow, that God provides so that you and I can escape temptation. The way that God helped Jesus overcome the temptation is the same way that he wants to help you and me. Number one, if you and I are going to escape temptation... You and I must get in the word. You and I must get in the Bible. You hear what I said? We must get in the Bible and the Bible must get in us. We must get in the Bible and the Bible must get in us. The Bible says this in Psalms 119 verse 11. David said this, Lord, I have hidden your word in my heart. That I might not sin against you. David said, Lord, I hide. It's not saying that he hides this and no one can see it. He says, God, I treasure your, your word in my heart. Not only if you treasure the word of God in your heart and in your mind, the Bible says, I hid it, I treasure it in my heart so that I might not sin against you. Listen to this. 
or sin will keep you away from the Bible, or the Bible will keep you away from sin. Sin will keep you away from the Bible, or the Bible will keep you away from sin. When? When you get the Word of God in your mind, in your heart. Now, notice what it says in your outline. Point number one. You cannot say, you cannot say what? Point number one. You cannot say what? Oh, it's right there. You cannot say what? Don't get me tempted right now to get down and show you where it's at. You cannot say what? It is written. If you do not know what is written. Now, where do we get, where do we get this, it is written? The Bible says that when Jesus was tempted, the devil comes and he gets a piece of rock and he says, If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, if you say, if you say who you are, you are, you are if, you, if you are the Son of God, convert this rocks into bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, man will not eat of bread of long, but everything that comes out of the mouth of God. The devil takes him to a temple and says, God said, if you go to the book of Psalms, God says that he would send his angels when we stumble. But he did not say that if we go to the top of the mountain, the, the Hollywood says in the mountain, the Bible says he was taken to the top of the pinnacle, to the church. He says, jump. Because God said that if you jump, his, he will send his angels. God never said that. See, if you don't know what is written, the devil will always lie to you. You have to know what is written. The only way that you're going to come over temptation, one way, one of the ways that you're going to come in temptation is you must get in the Word. You must know what is written. Yes, amen. All right? Now, if you've been coming to our life groups, if you've been coming to church, that's why we encourage you to do your soaps, to read the Bible, get a scripture, do an observation, do an application, do a prayer, because the more you do it, It's like a soap. It begins to clean you. It begins to wash you. And nothing can cleanse us, only the word, the blood of Jesus. And instead of falling into temptation, you become a threat to the devil because the word of God is in you and you become stronger. Yes, Number two, not only must you get in the word, you must learn to identify. You have to learn to identify where you're vulnerable. All of us are vulnerable. You know what vulnerable is? We're weak. There are certain areas in your life, there are certain areas in my life where I'm most vulnerable. All right? So let me give you the answers to how to discover the areas where you're vulnerable, where you and I have vulnerabilities. When, you have to ask yourself, when am I most tempted. When? Say with me, when. when. Number two, where am I most tempted? When, where, and with who? <laughs> who is with me <laughs> when I am tempted? Woo. See, if you learn to answer these questions, you'll learn to overcome temptation. Okay, say with me, when. when. Are you tempted when you're asleep? Hmm. Are you tempted right now while you're at church? Not unless you steal and you're already looking at a purse. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Are you tempted when you're reading the Bible? Uh -huh. Now, this is the honest truth. You already know when you're tempted. And the devil knows it too. Okay, where? Where are you most tempted? Are you tempted right now or here? No. Now, who are you with when you are most tempted? Who do you run with? Who do you hang around with? Come on, man. It's just, just one. Okay. Those of you that are married, look, I'm never tempted when I'm with my wife. Because I'm going to get slapped. Huh? So, if I know that, that I'm tempted with persons of the opposite sex... I'm going to make my relationship with my wife stronger. Amen. And if I, if all possibilities, I'm going to take her with me every place. Mm -hmm. Hear what I said? 
most of us, we know where we're weak. L- let, me, let, me sh- let me give you the story. Years ago, years ago, a lady wanted to hire a new chauffeur. Her chauffeur had died, and, and this lady was very wealthy, and she needed someone that was capable, not only that was capable, was going to keep her safe. So three persons got, were interviewed to be hired by her. And in the resume, one of them said that he was a, in his past life, he had been a uh, race car driver. And he knew how to maneuver cars at high speeds and all this. So they said, well, take us, let's go for a drive. She, she gets in the back. And she lived way up in the mountains, and there was a, a curve that they had to go around. And this guy maneuvered so good that he got it as close as he could to the curve to show her that he was able and he was a good driver. He got very close. All right, that's it. Well, I'll call you in a week. I got two more people to interview. The second one came. He says, you know what? Uh, I design cars. You know, when they design cars, they test drive them. And this guy was good. He was better than the other one because the other one was just a car driver. This one made him. He tested them. I say, okay, let's go for a ride. They go for a ride. And this guy was so good, he got even closer than the other one to the curve. And she go, ooh, Jesus. So I say, okay, give me about a week. I got one more to interview. And a guy arrives and says, honestly, I'm not a car driver. Uh, uh, I've never, I, I've been a chauffeur, but I mean, I'm, I don't have all the credentials. But if you hire me, you can trust me, and I, I will make sure you're safe. I will keep you away from arm's way. So I said, well, let's go for a drive. So they went to a drive, and the guy sees the curve. Not only did he think about her, he thought about him. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you go over, not only is the lady going over, he's going over too. So what he did, instead of getting close to the curve... He drove away as far as he could. At the end of the week, who do you think the lady hired? The first one, the second one, or the last one? The last one. I would have done the same thing. And see, and that's what we do with temptation. Most of us, I'm strong. I can handle it. We get as close as we can. No, no. Get away from it. Get away from it. You know where, you know when, and you know with who you are. Get away because you're going to fall down on the cliff, off the cliff. You know. You know where you're most tempted. So don't try to be like an expert. Don't try to be all this mm, macho man or macho woman, whatever you want to call it. Get away from, te- flee from temptation. Get away. Yes, amen. Well, you don't know I can handle it. Yeah, next time you're in jail. Your marriage is broken up. You've got AIDS, whatever you want to call it. Number three, you have not only to identify your temptations, you have to learn how to pray for deliverance. Say, Lord, deliver me. Now, all of us know the Lord's Prayer. Most of us know the Lord's Prayer. And part of the Lord's Prayer, part of the Lord's Prayer says this. Matthew 6, 13 says this. You know it. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Notice it doesn't say deliver us from evil. It says deliver us from the evil one. Who's the evil one? Who's the evil one? Thank you. He's the, he knows who's the evil one. Some of you don't know. Y'all need to go where he's going. Who's the evil one? See, when you fall into temptation, you're falling in the trap of the There you go. Thank you. I don't know who your name is, but you're paying attention. You fall into the that's why you got to understand the devil wants you to fall into temptation because you become weak. You're trapped by him. Because you're a threat to him if you can overcome temptation. So you have to learn to pray. It's not so much that God leads us into temptation. What we're actually praying, Lord, help me to be wise to get away from temptation. Lord, help me. Help me, God, that I won't be led into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. So you have to pray for deliverance. Every morning when you pray, Lord, thank you for a new day. God, keep me. Bless my wife, my children, those of you that are married, those of you who are single. Can, can, I tell, can I be honest with you this morning? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think it's only single people that have weakness, that have temptation. Mm-mm. Married or single, all of us have temptation. Yeah. Young or old, all of us are tempted. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you are like, Mm-mm. your temptation, you're lying. 
That's the first thing he put there, lying. <laughs> Woo! Number four. Number four. God provides the escape. Number four, find a friend. Find a friend. Not that it's going to lead you in temptation, but it's going to help you. All right? Notice what Ecclesiastes says. Ecclesiastes says this. I'm going to read it to you. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 19 through 10. Two are better because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Pity you if you don't have no support in your life to help you to overcome temptation. Now, this is the truth. If you and I have strong, reliable friend or friends, and if we learn to confess our temptations to them, we would have less need to confess our sins. Some of you didn't get it. Let me read it. Put it up there, please. If we confess our temptation, is temptation a sin? No. Is temptation a sin? No. If we confess our temptations, we would have less need to confess our sins. Let, let me tell you what I mean by this. Let's say I'm being tempted by smoking pot again. Oh, that's a devil. And honestly, in 32 years, I haven't smoked in a joint of marijuana again. I don't need it. Because when God, so a friend of mine says, what do you need marijuana? Well, with you with God, you got all you wanna. <laughs> all right? That just sounds good. I just like that. All right? All right? So, so let's say Ralph and, and, um, and Keyong and Lupe, they're my friends, right? And, and we're accountable one to another. Or even my wife. And I say, hey, guys, can I tell y'all something? I say, yeah, what's up? I say, I'm being tempted. Again, by smoking pot. And they're going to ask me, okay, who are you hanging around with? Where are you at? Where are you spending time at? Don't tell me you're, smoking, you're, you're tempted to smoking pot here at church. Because they're not going to believe you. Well, you know, after church, you know, after life group. Because I'm going home, you know, I, I passed through these streets and I saw some homies. And, you know, I just stopped to tell them about Jesus. And suddenly, you know, they were smoking. Some, and I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't smoke. I just inhaled it. <laughs> you heard that one before? I'm not going to say who it was. <laughs> I didn't smoke. I just inhaled it. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I got this. I didn't smoke it, but I got all those flashbacks came back, man. <sighs> Honestly, guys, I didn't smoke none. But can y'all help me pray? I've been tempted. I haven't gone back. If I learned, if you learned to, to have a friend and confess those, you wouldn't be confessing sins. Yeah, yeah. Usually, when after we mess up in our marriage, in our relationship with God, or whatever, we're confessing sins. Does God forgive sins? Yes. 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 But if we had a friend that we would be accountable to, you know, I, I, besides my wife, I've got a friend. I've got a friend. He's been my friend for, for years. And when he calls me, he asks me several of these questions. Number one, how are you doing with your eyes? Have you exposed your eyes to pornography? He asked me that. And I have to answer it's truthful because I'm going to go to hell if I lie. I say, Pastor, I haven't. Okay. How are your finances? Have you been honoring God with your finances? I say, yes, sir. How is your relationship with your wife? How are you treating your wife? How are you treating your kids? He asked me these questions. I said, Pastor, I'm doing good. And so he asked me a set of questions, and then the last question he asked me is, have you just lied to me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, he knows me. He knows my tone of voice. He knows I can't get away with anything. And just by him asking me those questions have kept me accountable. 
my wife and him and other friends of mine, if you had a friend, you wouldn't be confessing sins if you learned how to confess your temptations. But you know what we do? We hide them. Oh, man. I don't... It's a sign of weakness. It's a sign of weakness. I want everybody. We put on the mask of super, not super, super Christian. I don't have no temptations. I can handle this on my own. And do you know, while you keep it in the darkness, while you keep your temptations in the darkness, they're growing in you, in your mind, in your heart. While you, but when you bring it out in the light, it begins to break over you, and God will give you the victory. Number five, number five, refocus your attention. Refocus your attention. Refocus your attention. Tell the person next to you, refocus your attention. You all ready? This is what it means. I want you to see what it means. Whatever gets your attention gets you. The battle for sin starts in the mind. To win the battle and overcome temptation, change your focus and think about something else. Let me read it again. Whatever gets your attention gets you. The battle for sin starts in your mind. To win the battle and overcome temptation, change your focus and think about something else. Let me tell you this. Let's say you didn't eat breakfast this morning. And right now, as you're looking at me, you're not looking at me. You're looking at some enchiladas. <laughs> so I can't wait for pastor to finish. Lord, deliver us from a long preaching today. Because <laughs> uh, this tummy, this one is going to eat the other one. <laughs> Lord, I, need, I want me some enchiladas. All right. So right now you're looking at me and you're smiling. But you're not looking at me. You're looking at some enchiladas. Mm -hmm. Your mind is focused on enchiladas. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You know that craving starts here? They don't start here? Did you hear what I said? My, my wife has a friend that had that, uh, they tie up to whatever it's called, light bell, whatever. She has a friend. She's a, she was a, a teacher or whatever. And, and this teacher told my, my wife, you know, they put that, light belt that put the belt in my stomach but I realized I needed it up here because even with eating it doesn't start here it starts here all right so your focus okay let me talk about when someone offends you someone offends you someone rejects you yeah you, you felt it in the heart but it's here man that guy for he, he offended me he, he told me I wasn't no good and you're thinking of what they said. You're thinking of what they did to you. Okay, let's go with temptation. Oh, man. Only one joint, Lord. I won't go to hell. You'll forgive me. And I keep thinking. I have to change my focus. You see this hot lady. Oh, nobody said amen. I was expecting y'all to. What do you mean Amen. You see this hot lady, and her dress is not up here. She's, it's up here. He said, I rebuke the devil. <laughs> see, <laughs> you ladies, you ladies are not tempted by what you see. You're tempted by what you hear. The other day, I was with my wife at a store, and some old man, my, we were going to visit someone in the hospital. We were going to visit someone in the hospital, and my wife and I went to Randall to buy some flowers. And this old man... Told my wife. <laughs> Let me change my focus. <laughs> this old man, I was in the car. This old man told my wife, You're as beautiful as them flowers. My wife gets in the car and says, can you believe what? I said, what? What? Some guy had the nerve. I said, baby girl, I, you, know, you are lovely. My wife didn't. See, because ev every woman that is going to fall for another guy, single, or, is going to be through here. 
You know that when Eve was tempted, Eve was tempted by what she was hearing from the devil and then by what she saw. You guys, you, we're going to be tempted. But man, you know why they have all these? When you're going on, on 45, they got these naked women. They got all these. On, why? Because man, when you're with your wife, you're singing ha ha lit. You don't see. But when you're by yourself, change your focus. Give your, get your mind off of that. Get your mind off of that. Rather it's anger, rather it's unforgiveness, rather it's temptation, the enchilada, get off of it. Yeah. All right? Get off of it. If you learn, this is the, we, we talked about this in, in transformation in the beginning of the year. If you renew your mind where the word of God, your mind will be transformed. Because if you change your way of thinking, you will change your way of living. If you change your way of thinking, you will change your way of living. If you learn to take that, your focus off temptation, off of evil, off of doing bad, off of unforgiveness, my God, you will overcome the enemy in the name of Jesus. Get your, fo- look, look, get your focus and the, uh, remind yourself that God delivered you, that God forgave you. And when you remember yourself, you, 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 you bring to your memory, oh my God, I can't go back to what I, my old lifestyle because God has done so much for me. When you change your focus and you remember that the blood of Jesus forgave you and that God delivered you, you won't fall back into temptation because with God, we have, we got all we want to. Number six, number six, guard your heart, guard your heart. So let's review quickly. God provides six steps for us to escape. Number one, get in the word. Number two, identify your vulnerabilities. Number three, pray for deliverance. Number four, Find a friend. Number five, refocus your attention. Number six, guard your heart. Are you ready to overcome temptation? Yes. Are you ready to overcome the evil one? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Now, I want to conclude by showing you that temptation does not on the outside. It starts on the inside. So let's, what, let's read this verse. It's in James chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, and we're going to conclude with this. All right, the Bible says this. When you are tempted, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. God tests you, but God never tempts you. And when God tests you, it's only to make you bigger and stronger. Never to make you weaker. Devil, the, the devil tempts you to make you weaker. To make you fall into, into, his, into his traps. But when you're tempted, the Bible says, don't say God is tempting me. Because, for God cannot be tempted. God cannot be tempted because he's God. He, there's no evil in God. There's no evil desires in God. God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Why? Because God is not the evil one. God is the good one. I say God is the good one. All right? Now, notice where temptation comes from. Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and in ties. Let me show you this. Please bring me the rod. Please applaud Vanna White. All right. So this is what the devil does. He waits. He knows where you're vulnerable. Mm-hmm. He knows he, he, he can't get you when you're at church, when you're asleep, when you're in the Word, when you're in a life group. Mm-hmm. He waits for you either at lunch, after lunch, as you're going home, when you're playing hooky. Hooky, what's that? You know, when you don't go to school. And he does this. The Bible says that when you're tempted, you're tempted, you're dragged away, you're enticed. But you're, temptation does not start on the outside. It starts on the inside. By my own evil. Mm. <laughs> now, these guys are looking at it. Jerry's taking notes. He's not enticed by that. Mm. Mm. Everybody up there, the little girl says, Kim, can I give, give me that candy? Give me that mint. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're not. Mm, so the devil, the devil keeps trying. 
This didn't work. I'm going to get you. Mm-hmm. Try one of these little warms. Mm-hmm. Mm. All those little kids. Mm. <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a sweet tooth. I've got a sweet tooth. So. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> tell the person next to tell, no, tell the person next to you, don't go for it. So he keeps going. See? You say, okay, he didn't fall. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. See, the devil got time. He's been here a long time. And he's made many fall. He knows what you like. He knows what I like. He knows when. He knows where. When, I, when I'm with that person, I shouldn't be with him. So he put something. This is a true $100 bill. Mm-hmm. See, some of you re- put the Bible up. <laughs> oh, Lord, you blessed me. I went to church and I was blessed. <laughs> no, you stole. You, you fell for it. So, so the devil goes, mm-hmm. He didn't go for that little mint. Look at Jerry. Now Jerry's paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Well, go a mint. Oh, let these guys in front. I could use a hundred dollar bill. So, he said, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> he starts, and he goes, and then he and then he plays on your weaknesses. Come on, come on. You can do it. Now, let, let me say, the fish, he's enticed by what he sees. Yes. But the fish, out of his own interbeing, he doesn't know that there's a, under the warm, there's a trap. And those of you, I'm not a fisherman, but I've seen when they catch fish, they got hooked. Yeah. And the devil wants to hook you. Because yes. yes. once he hooks you, you know, there are some fish that get away, but most do not get away. And when the devil tempts you and you fall into temptations, many people stay longer than they thought they were going to stay in that sin. Oh, see, but, but the devil keeps trying. Oh, that didn't work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, this was the devil. They put a joint right there for me. It ain't right. And this morning, because I got a suit to, I got a sweet tooth. This morning, I was go- I was gonna go for this, and it fell, and I suddenly went like, "Who get your hands off of that?" Get your hands off of that. <laughs> now, I know you're laughing. And I don't know. How ridiculous is it for me, for you, in, for, you in invi- for you to invite me out to eat today. And we go to your favorite restaurant. And I'm like this. And then you say, uh, this is my pastor. <laughs> Forgive me. I know you're laughing. Okay, the devil won't get dig- He throws all these things at once. He throws all these things. For some, it's cars. For some, it's money. For some, it's your old lifestyle. For some, it's, I don't know. For some, it's a woman. For some, it's beer. The devil throws all these things at you. But when the devil throws all of that, I'm here to tell you, God is faithful. God is faithful. The Bible says, for God is faithful, he will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you cannot stand up against it. But when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you will not give it to temptation. God provides the escape. I said God provides the escape. It's up to you if you go through that escape or you entice. Mm -hmm. Let me conclude. 
I've been a Christian for 32 years. And I wish I could tell you that I've never fallen into temptation. I'm your pastor. And just like you, I have temptations. I'm going to tell you. This is honest truth. I've never, ever been tempted to go smoke, to smoke pot again. I've never. And the devil doesn't tempt me with, with marijuana because I'm not enticed by that. But in my past years, I was tempted by pornography. I was tempted by lying. I would easily lie to my wife about different things. Until I saw Lily when she was eight or nine. Easily, she would lie. I said, who taught that girl how to lie? Even without me, she hearing me and listening to me, what I don't overcome, my kids have to deal with it. And when I would fall in temptation, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've never been tempted with a woman with the opposite sex. That's why I'm very careful. I, I greet women. I don't. I, I, most of you, most women are not friends. With, I only have maybe three or four close. Uh, not even close. I'm very careful who's my friend in Facebook. And I'm very careful what I text. Because even today, Facebook is a big temptation for many of you. Yes, yes, yes. You spend more time in, the, in Facebook than in God's book. That's why you're tempted. So when I was tempted and I fell into temptation, I didn't have no one. Or I did. But I acted like I was strong. Now when I'm tempted, I go immediately to my wife. And I say, please help me pray for me. Please pray for me. Listen to this. Please listen to this. Five years ago, we were going to hire a new secretary. You know that Cynthia works here and Stephanie works here. We were going to hire someone else. And one day, my wife and I were walking. We were walking. And I told my wife, uh, we're, we're about to interview two girls to be the next secretary. And she said, who are you going to interview? I said, Stephanie, and I named the other one. And immediately she went like this, don't interview the next one. I said, why? She could be a temptation for you. And I didn't say, girl, you're jealous. Only, can, only can, people can tell you that you're beautiful like flowers. <laughs> you know what I did? I looked, I looked at her eye and I said, thank you because you love me. No questions asked. We never interviewed the other girl. Does my wife think I could have fallen with that girl? But if you begin to get close to people, I'm very careful how I joke around with the girls. I don't tell her. I've never disclosed to any woman my heart, only to my wife. Most adultery start in the mind. When you begin to disclose emotionally with people, you begin attached emotionally. You get emotionally attached to your old lifestyle. You get emotionally attached to pornography. You get it, and he got you. Many times I dealt with stuff, and I didn't know how I would overcome it. I noticed that I was more vulnerable when I was less in the Word of God. So, so before you, I had been doing it for five, six years because I was the one that needs the word of God in my mind and my heart. So I'm teaching you so is because I know how it has helped me. Am I still tempted? Of course. I'd be lying. But I, I got to get away. I got to get away. Caleb can tell you. We cut off some channels for, from our, our cable station. We cut them off. I don't have HBO. I don't have none of those, none of those channels. I only have TBN. And new life so I can see me. <laughs> when you fall, the devil comes to life and says, God won't forgive you. There's no hope for you. That's why this morning we came early. We told you that you can be forgiven by the blood of the Lamb. You can overcome temptation. Not because you're strong. Because he is faithful. And he is able. And because Jesus overcame, he can help you overcome. Come on, please stand and give God a big hand clap. Come on. Yes, come on. Give him a bigger hand clap. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Let God hear you. But let the devil also hear you. That you know now 
that you can overcome temptation. You can overcome temptation. You can be victorious by the grace of God in your life and by the grace of God in my life. All right? I want you to place one hand in your head and the other one in your heart, and I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, you know exactly the areas where I'm vulnerable, and the devil knows them, and I know them. Today, help me to get away from those places and from those people where I'm most tempted. God, you know that many times I have been seduced by temptation and I committed things and I saw things and I heard things and I touched things that I never should have, I should have never touched. But this morning, I ask you for forgiveness. God, forgive me. God, forgive me for I've sinned against you. Today I pray, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. God, I realize now that you're faithful, that Jesus came to die for me, and then when I am tempted, you always provide an escape. Help me to go through those routes of escape when I am tempted. And help me to overcome everything in my life that the devil has used to stop me, to put me down. Wash me, cleanse me, and that your grace raises me up to levels that I never thought that my life could become. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.